Hi, my name is Luke Foster, and you're listening to Tin Pod Radio. If you like hearing about my comic book on Dr. Bananas Week, you can check it out on Comixology.com. Just look for Dr. Bananas Monkey Magician. If you are interested in some dark comedy and or political humor, check out Supernatural Suburbs each Monday only on Patreon. That's Patreon.com slash Cartoonist Luke. Thanks very much. Enjoy the show. Okay, so <laughs> my my cosplay journey is actually kind of interesting because I didn't get started in like a more in a traditional way, I guess I could say. So my first convention, I was 14 years old. I'm 22 now, but I was 14 years old, and it was like 2010, and I was really really into. I just really got gotten into anime. And what was happening was I was, like, watching all these English dubs for shows like Full Metal Alchemist and uh, Subasa Reservoir Chronicle and Holic and all these other great shows. And I was really into the voice acting community and voice actors. So I was looking up uh, panels that they had spoken for and I wanted to attend some. So I, like, looked up what conventions they were attending. Like, what are these things? What are these anime conventions? I want to go to one. Are there any near me? So that's kind of like how I got started going to conventions. But when I went to like, as I was searching up conventions in my area, um, I found AFO anime festival, Orlando, and I started like looking into what people do at conventions outside of just going to panels. Like, Oh, what do people do to make this badge worth it or whatever? And I stumbled across like cosplayers and I thought the idea was, like, so cool, so I started, like, looking up, like, oh, who would I even cosplay? And I talked to my sister about it, and she's, like, not even into anime at all. So <laughs> so I talked to her about it, and we agreed that I could pull off uh, my favorite character at the time, Kyoya Otori from Oran High School Host Club. So I searched online, and I had, like, squirreled away a bunch of, like, Christmas gift money and whatever from my grandparents, and so... They um, helped, like, I kind of, you know, bought cosplay uh, from, like, Cosplay Foo, and then I bought a wig uh, from, I think, the same site. It was, like, the most expensive wig I've ever bought that was not, like, a lace front. It's ridiculous. It's It was so funny, because uh, it was before Arda was, like, really popular, Um and that was my first cosplay. And when I went to the convention, oddly enough, I spent absolutely no time with voice actors. I just met so many other cosplayers that I just ended up cosplaying the whole weekend and having a good time with those people. So it just kind of like started the ball rolling. Uh, and I continued to buy stuff for a while. I think I started to make my own things late. 2012 2013-ish so that puts me at around four or five years of like making my own things one of the questions i usually ask people is do you remember the first time somebody came up to you and asked for a photo and what was it like oh boy um i think it was actually at my first convention at afo uh was when people were coming up and asking me for photos because oddly enough um or maybe not so oddly, since Oron was very popular at that time, uh, I ended up kind of like walking around and I initially went by myself, but I ended up kind of like collecting a group of people that were all cosplaying from Oron High School Host Club. Um, and so it was like a little group of people. And so people would stop and be like, hey, can I take your picture? And I thought that it was uh, super neat, first of all, because uh, I had seen all of these pictures of cosplayers online 
And, you know, I was thinking, wow, maybe I'm going to be able to find myself uh, online as well, you know? And so it was, it was really neat. And it never stops being like really flattering and awesome for me just because I don't like, I have a, I have a decent following now, but I really just kind of, I kind of cosplay to hang out with my friends and to show the love that I have for the characters, you know? So I don't really do it specifically to, to garner um, people asking me for photos. Cause to me, it's nice that they think that my cosplay is cool, you know? So, yeah. Uh, I know like, you should always ask somebody before you take their photo at a convention. Absolutely. But how do you think is the best way to approach somebody? Is it just simply like to walk up to them and say, can I take your picture? Or should you get their information if you're going to post it online? Or how should you think they should do that? So I, I love it when people ask for my information because I typically forget to hand people my cosplay cards. Um, but I do think that it's really important to, you know, approach someone in any in any way and say like, Hey, I really like what you're wearing. Can I take your picture? Or like, hey, can I take a photo of you? Uh, and you can address the person obviously by their character name. Most people don't usually mind that, um, since you know they are dressed up like the character. And a lot of cosplayers I know do whenever they're in costume will respond to their character name as well as their like cosplay name or their own name. Um, but I think it's so important to ask. Like I cannot, I could never emphasize enough how important it is to just walk up to a cosplayer. Like most are not mean. Most all of them are not mean. Most everyone will tell you yes, unless they are like half undressed or they're uncomfortable with some part of their costume, in which case it's on them to, you know, respectfully decline. And then at that point you just move on and find other cosplayers at the convention. Uh, it's not really a, a huge deal, but I, I wish maybe one day people will get used to, uh, especially like photographers with, you know, like that just kind of go around um, for like the people who do press for Kotaku and, you know, other and the convention itself. Like if they asked for cosplay cards or information, I think that's really important because you want to be able to give credit where credit is due. You know, do most cosplayers uh, carry the information with them like on a card? Um, some do, some don't. I think it depends on just personal preference because I really like making cosplay cards because it gives me a chance to showcase different types of work that I've done since I have, um, one standard front and then a bunch of different backs so I can like fan them out and then let someone pick like a series that they like so that they'll remember me or they'll pick, uh, the outfit that I was wearing when I met them, which is like cool. Um, I feel like they were more common a couple of years ago than they are now, since most people just carry their phones around and say like, Hey, do you have Instagram? And then you just switch Instagrams right on the spot. But I like the cosplay card because it's not the like immediate, uh, obligation, I guess, to kind of like follow someone on Instagram. It gives you the chance to kind of take their information home with you and be like, Oh yeah, I remember this person. You can like have the context, I guess, for when you, when you met them. Yeah, and plus, like, you can, like, if I take a picture of you at a convention and I get your card and I post it on Instagram, I tag you in it, you might tag the photo and and which send people to my Instagram, so it's a, overall help everybody out. Exactly, yeah, yeah, so, like, if you don't have, like, the card with you to, you know, help contextualize when you took the photo and you just, like, trade Instagrams, there could be a point where you're like, oh, when did I actually see this person? Oh, who are they cosplaying again? And then you have to do, like, a bunch of extra, like, searching and stuff. And, you know, so it can, it's just a few extra steps, really. But I think that cosplay cards are super convenient. And they also give me a chance to help, like practice branding myself or like figure out how I want to brand myself for the duration of time that I have the cards. So when I first made cosplay cards, I put Krom from Fire Emblem on the front of them because that was like the costume I really wanted to be like people to know me for because I was like so proud of it. It was like my first big construction. It changed my construction path completely. Uh, and now I have Leo from Fire Emblem, which is with a photo that I gave to you um, and on the front of my cards. And I haven't ordered them yet, but like now that's the thing that I have that I'm like this. I am the most proud of this. I want people to see this character or like photos of me as this character and like think of me and, you know, associate that with me because I I love um, that character and I love being that character. So, 
you were talking about like uh, photos of cosplay, like oh maybe they might not be fully in costume or ready mm -hmm. for the photo or something. Do you ever see like because we all know on websites for like comic book news, convention news, and all that stuff, there's tons of photos. Do you ever run across one of your photos and I'm you're like I wish they hadn't posted that. <laughs> <laughs> Very rarely, uh, because first of all, I us I don't usually find photos of myself on the internet at all. <laughs> so I usually just kind of like, sometimes I'll scroll through Instagram tags, but I'm usually not super concerned, um, like about, you know, going out and finding photos of myself online. Um, but there are, I don't know, I guess there are some that um, I do wish people wouldn't repost so like but way back before um before i started getting really deep into nintendo cosplay where i am now uh i was cosplaying a lot of thing other stuff um from like web comics and things and people would post some stuff on like 4chan and like that wasn't my favorite thing but then i learned just like not to go there because people are going to post you there no matter what uh at some point so, but I, I don't know. I really can't say that I ever like came across a photo more, more than like, I wish they hadn't posted that. I, I feel like I want to reach into the picture and like adjust my wig or flatten some part of my costume or make my collar stand up straighter or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like when most, like where I tell people is like, also don't just take pictures. Not only is it creepy just to, you know, across the room, take a picture of somebody in a way. Get the cosplayer to pose for it, because a lot of them want to. Like, yeah, they, they yeah. Have poses they want to do, and I'm like, you can get a good photo. Just go up to them and, and and ask them and stuff. They're all ready to do that. Yeah, I totally agree. And also, I think that there is some some level of disconnect between like uh, some people who just are you know walking around a convention looking for cosplayers to take photos of, and like because sometimes they they don't know like when the cosplayer is ready to be taken like to have the picture taken of them. Cause I have had situations where I just want to make a few final adjustments and then pose. And then before I know it, they've already taken the photo and I'm probably doing something really stupid. Uh, and then they just, they're like, thank you. And I'm like, wait a minute, hang on. <laughs> and so it gets kind of like, I guess awkward in that way, you know, uh, that I'm just like, wait, I wasn't totally ready yet. Especially if I'm in a group. Cause more of the group is usually ready. Uh, than than me, I usually take an extra minute. <laughs> And it might be courtesy also to offer people the, like, if you've got a digital camera, just say, is this okay or something, you know? Yeah, a lot of, I've noticed a lot of photographers or just people walking around cons who take our photos um, usually show us. And really, in the moment of a convention, I usually just I become kind of like a yes man to photos where I'm just yeah. like, yeah, that works. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh with more and more cosplayers doing actual photo shoots, and I don't know how long it's been around that doing actual photo shoots with photographers, but with more and more do, doing that, do you see that becoming a main focus of a lot of cosplayers at conventions? Uh, I think so. I think that a lot, like, it's become a very uh, pivotal part, like, or important part of the community to have um, photo shoots for your stuff. And I think that some people don't really care for it very much. Like I have a couple of friends who do photo shoots more so they can have proof of the costume. So they don't worry about like getting a photographer who, you know, charges a lot of money and has six different programs. They run their photos through, for example, you know, or they don't worry about photos that have like fancy composites or anything like that. But then I have other friends who are like, really into it and they really want to get like as many photo shoots as possible and they want to shoot with people who they like really trust and they're like I want to get lots of pictures because I want to sell good prints which is a whole other section of the of the community that you I could talk about you know as well like from my limited perspective of it which is just so interesting that like it's got, it went from like oh we're all taking photos on our phones and 3DSs to like now people are taking pictures on DSLRs and doing photo shoots and now people are doing those photo shoots but also purchasing print rights from photographers and selling them online or at cons depending on the type of person that they are and what kind of following they have uh, but I do think that it's become more important for cosplayers in general to have photo shoots um, to, to the cosplayers like it depends on person to person like I said some people really just are only going to have fun with their friends and uh, even now like I've kind of like gone fallen away a little bit from doing photo shoots with photographers more so to just kind of 
do photo shoots ourselves. Like, you know, my boyfriend has a DSLR and we'll just kind of like go out and take photos every now and then. And uh, I pay for Photoshop and Lightroom monthly. So we make a pretty good use of it now uh, that we're just kind of like doing a bunch of do it yourself DIY style things. And we just go to parks and location shoots around. And I like doing stuff like that because it removes the stress and pressure of doing a photo shoot in like 30 minutes at a con because so many photographers are like, okay, here's my shot. Like, here's my, you know, booking thing. It's $60 for 30 minutes. You get five to seven pictures, whatever they want to say. Um, and that becomes like very stressful because at a convention, especially larger ones like KatsuCon, you end up kind of struggling and scrambling for a, a good place to shoot where it's very crowded and, you know, people like, I heard it was raining this year. I didn't go. So I heard it was raining on one of the days. And so everyone had to like come inside, which just absolutely like totally flooded that center with people. Uh, so I think that it becomes like a balance of the stress of doing ones at, um, at conventions versus like doing it at home versus, you know, is it important to you? Uh, with that happening, we all know within as more popular communities you get, the more some, seedier elements in them. Um, how would you recommend people avoid bad photographers? Because I've heard a lot of stories from cosplayers about bad photographers. Ooh, yeah, there, there really are. Uh, like that, that has also kind of become like an issue for a lot of cosplayers. I would say like picking a cosplay photographer is always a really difficult thing. Um, whenever you have your cosplay. So I crossplay a lot. Like I'm a girl and I cosplay boys all the time because that's how I started. You know, I was Kyoya and like, I didn't even, my, my brain, I didn't even question it. I didn't even think to do a gender bend instead. I just wanted to be Kyoya. So like that kind of carried along. And now I, you know, just do a lot of male cosplays. I have kind of an androgynous face. It works out pretty well for me. So finding cosplay photographers who are willing to shoot like homemade male costumes is always kind of difficult because some newer cosplay photographers are only interested in getting really famous off of who they're shooting. And some cosplay photographers are only interested in shooting women, which is a whole other problem because I think that you should, you know, expand your horizons first of all. And second of all, uh, you know, like, I love, I love like being, you know, I love cosplaying girls too, but I think that it's just as, you know, important to just take photos of cosplayers, but to find a good one, I think that like asking your friends who, who their experiences are with is important. Um, just so that you can, like, if they have shot with whoever you're trying to book before you can get their experience. Cause I've avoided a couple of photographers that way just because friends have been like, Oh yeah, I shot with them at XYZ convention and I didn't get my photos back for a year or I never got my pictures back or like they were really late or they did, you know, like whatever story they may have. Uh, those were all bad ones, but I've heard good ones too. So I've, you know, booked with people like that. Um, but looking through the cosplayer cosplay photographers page is also really important if they have one. If they don't have one, I'm always instantly more wary because I'm like, okay, I don't – like, you didn't give me a place that you're showcasing all of your work, and I want to see what your, like, your work looks like. Um, this can be hit or miss, of course, because sometimes, like, it has been such that we've looked at photographers and said, oh, yeah, this person looks good. I'll book them, and then, like, we'll get photos back and – it's not, it doesn't look as good as the rest of the work on their page. Cause like, you know, their page is essentially their portfolio. So obviously they're only going to post what they find to be really good. I will say though, that this year I've been, this past year, I've been really lucky um, finding very good photographers, just absolutely brilliant people, fun to shoot with, easy to shoot with, relaxed type photographers um, who are really into what I'm cosplaying to, um, cause sometimes photographers always, they have like preferences and things that they're into. And like, it's worthwhile to ask if they're into the series that you're cosplaying from, because if they are, it makes it a lot easier to shoot with them because it saves a lot of explaining at the con. So I don't have to be like, oh yeah, my name, like my character's name is Sigbert from Fire Emblem. He's one of the, he's the son of one of the royal brothers and he's, a, you know, a very quiet boy. But if someone is already familiar with Fire Emblem, then I have to just kind of like contextualize the game and the characters because they probably already have heard of them. They might just not know their personalities. Um, cause you know, 
whether or not if it's a cosplay photographer is going to research your series before you shoot with them is super hit or miss depending on who the photographer is. Cause some like to do that so that they have pose ideas in mind. If the cosplayer runs out and some prefer to have the, all of the poses rest in the cosplayer's hands. And I don't mind, you know, collecting pose references, especially if I'm cosplaying with friends, because then I will just kind of pull up my phone or have someone else pull up my phone. If I'm wearing gloves or something and just be like, okay, yeah, go to this album. I have a Pose Refs album on my phone and it's just, you know, I clear it out and I fill it up with fan art and or canon images that I want to try to recreate in cosplay. What would you say to people who are thinking cosplay is somehow going to make them famous? Again, I think that's a super hit or miss thing as well. Becoming cosplay famous is super hit or miss because it, I kind of like right now equate it to um like going viral on the internet it's just really really rare that it happens because the people who a lot of people that i follow who are famous right now so i follow um he he and hopi chan who have been my cosplay idols for a long time because i followed them way back when they did a whole super mario group with their family they had their whole their, their dad and their brothers um all do like like Mario and Luigi and Wario and Waluigi. And it was like a whole group. They made prosthetics for the whole family. And I thought that was so cool. And the two of them continue to just kind of do um, really whatever they feel like doing, whatever makes them happiest in between like commissions and other projects. And I really admire that, uh, that facet of, of their, of their work that they just seem to do what makes them happiest. And I hope to one day be like them. That would be great. Uh, not have to worry about numbers so much, but, I know some people who like want to become famous or even just want to make money off of cosplay. And it really takes it uh, away from being a hobby and more of being like a side job type thing, you know, because you do have to work really hard um, because to be famous with the current like way that the algorithms are set up on social media and how, you know, all these sites want you to pay money for your posts to be boosted that's, you know, it, it kind of creates like a, you have to pour a lot into it before you start seeing any of the results back. Um, and you have to be posting constantly and making new things all the time. Um, and if you don't make new things all the time, you at least have to have content for your every day, you know? So it's like, have you gotten to a point where people don't care whether or not you're posting cosplay, they just want to see your face, you know? So I think that if people like want to become famous for cosplay, then to kind of like that they want to take it seriously, I think like, you know, good for them. Um, I'm, I don't, you know, that's not how I want to treat the hobby. Right. But like, I don't, I don't know. I don't condemn people who, who want to become famous for, for cosplay stuff. Um, I agree with like a little bit to like, I do like, uh, photography of like action figures and stuff is fun thing i do mm -hmm. and like sometimes people are like well you, you need to do a photo of this or this because that's a popular thing and sometimes i do that but i feel myself sometimes like well i don't want to be forced into it being like i can only do it if there's a movie coming out or this coming out i want to do fun stuff too do you ever yeah. feel like when you're cosplaying sometimes like oh i'd like to do that but it's not going you know get hits on my Instagram or it's not going to be popular. Does that ever come into the thought process? Uh, similarly, yeah. So recently I have kind of like fallen into a, a pattern of cosplaying a lot of Fire Emblem. So I've been doing it for like, you know, four years now, cosplaying a lot of Fire Emblem, like not like a bunch of new costumes every con, but really I like, I wore Chrom for like three years at almost every con I went to. And now I have, I have Laurent and I have Leo and I have all these other like fire emblem costumes and things I want to do. Cause I love the game so much. So it is stuff that I love doing, but because I've done it so much, my I've built up this following in within the fire emblem fandom specifically so when I cosplay stuff, even stuff that I still love, like Breath of the Wild Zelda, that is popular, you know, because it's a Nintendo game. And lucky for, for my tastes, Nintendo is just generally popular. Mm -hmm. um, but it will still get less likes than my Fire Emblem pictures just because that's not the fan base, I guess, or follower base that I have built. 
Um, I don't think it's ever stopped me from doing anything, but I have put off certain costumes for like at some point later in the future, just because I think, oh, well, you know, all my friends are into Fire Emblem right now. So I should do all of these Fire Emblem costumes with them right now. And as a student and a cosplayer, like I'm about to graduate from from college in, in you know, a month and a couple of days. Right. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Coming up at the end of the semester here. So, like, as a student and a cosplayer, like, I can't really afford to do a new costume or two every month. I usually, like, I end up with, I don't know, this past year I ended up with ten, but, uh, you know, I, I only made six of them. So that's a lot slower than um, than a lot of other cosplayers that I follow. So there's, like, pressure there to make the costumes that I do make really count. And so it's like, what am I going to do this year? And even this year I've got a bunch of fire emblem plans and I'm like, Oh, I really want to cosplay from a lot of other series too. Cause I have varied interests, I promise, but it's just that all of my plans are coming up fire emblem. So I guess I do understand that feeling where you feel like you're kind of pigeonholed into doing something just because, uh, you know, like that's the, the base that you've got or the, you know, it's popular right now. Um, and I think that to some degree, um, especially when going back to talking about cosplayers being famous, it's a hard to avoid that, uh, that topic of conversation. Like, oh, well, shouldn't you just do stuff that's popular? Because it kind of becomes a question of, you know, like, cause Fire Emblem isn't the most popular thing in the world. Um, but, you know, I've built a following off of it, you know, so do you want to build that following off of what you do all the time for yourself? Uh, and then you know, end up kind of like me ish, get pigeonholed into doing a certain set of things. Or do you want to just like follow the trends and then become super famous and then deviate from that? I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting thing. Uh, a lot of cosplayers I've seen take their, uh, cosplay either. Be it was already there before, or they take it after into doing other stuff. Like, or I've interviewed a cosplayer for this series who does stage work now mm -hmm. so she mm -hmm. learned how to do sewing and stuff like that and now she does stage work uh do you think your cosplay is going to lead into something you do like or help something you do later in life hmm i i've thought about this a lot because obviously i'm like you know in the process of looking for jobs and things right now being on the cusp of graduation and i think that Cosplay has given me a lot of interesting skills that will probably help me do something at some point down the line um, because it's helped me become a better artist. And, you know, now I know how to use Photoshop and Lightroom for things that may help me, you know, at, you know bolster my resume and skills and at a job interview. Um, and I've already spoken to a couple of people, you know, at interviews saying like, oh, yeah, in my spare time, I make replica costumes of video game and anime characters because that's what cosplay is without using the word cosplay. And because you, you never know how that's going to go over with people because mm -hmm. it's got a really mixed view overall. But if you say that you make replica costumes, people can think along the lines of theater, which is something they're generally more comfortable with. Uh, so that's how I usually frame it. But I think that... Um, like, I don't personally want to do anything with, uh, like, sewing in my future because – so my degree is in writing and rhetoric, so I want to be, like, an editor, like, a technical editor or, like, a pub book publishing editor, uh, something along those lines. Or I'd like to just, you know, start in proofreading and grow from there to see where it takes me, which is, you know, not really relevant necessarily to uh, to cosplay, not directly. Um is it a research topic? Absolutely. I could spend a lot of time researching cosplay and it would be probably pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, so I think that like the skill set that I got from cosplay will help me in the future, not necessarily like the sewing part, um, but like definitely the time management skills, the budgeting, the, the learning different programs like Photoshop and Lightroom um, and things like that will help me in the future. Well, having worked with a lot of editors, I'm, I can tell you the ones that have different backgrounds, it helps. Oh, absolutely. Because like, absolutely. they bring something else to the writing. Yeah, yeah. Because really, like, you don't want to just be a person who has only experienced, like, one thing or has only experienced uh, writing in your life. Because then you just become too focused on the, um, the grammar parts of the writing. And then you kind of, like, don't get 
good at looking at the bigger picture. So I think that like traveling for, cause I live in Florida, but I travel to, to the eat like Northeast to do cosplay stuff. And I'm hoping to travel to the West coast one day and, you know, go cosplay over there as well. Cause I just like to, I'd like, I'd like to see more of the United States and more of the cosplay community in those places. Um, so I think that travel and meeting new people and, you know, talking to other people with different backgrounds, helps me as a an aspiring future editor to bring all of that to the table instead of just bringing my writing capabilities so yeah i agree uh talking about conventions again does uh does cosplaying at a convention keep you from enjoying the other things at a convention hmm well so i would normally so i think that if you had asked me this like a year ago i would have said yes but now I don't think so, just because uh, if there is a convention where I want to attend the other programming, I will try to make plans to do that. So at at MAGFest, which was the last event I really attended, like for the whole weekend back in January, um, I really wanted to go to this panel called The Rhetoric of Acquisition in Video Games, because yes, that is right in my wheelhouse, right? So... I really wanted to go when I told everyone that I was rooming with, like, I'm going to this panel, hell or high water, whether or not anyone wants to come with me. So they were like, okay, Marissa, we get it. You do your thing. So uh, later in the evening, um, because that was when it was, I was wearing something casual, which I was you know, happy about. But I usually try to plan that I'm wearing something nice during the day and then easy to wear at night so that it's, you know, better, easier to walk around. Uh, so I did end up going to that panel um, I have been like kept from, I still haven't met any voice actors, which is hilarious <laughs> because I've been cosplaying and going to conventions for eight years <laughs> and I still haven't like met a voice actor. So the original intent still has not been met, but I don't feel like I've missed out necessarily. Like, yes, one day I will meet like, you know, voice actors for the characters I cosplay. And now to me, that's more exciting. Like, I want to keep an eye out like, oh, if Max Middleman is going to a convention that I want to like that I want to attend, I will bring and wear Leo and be like, yeah, I loved your performances, the character that I'm dressed as, because I think it's cool. You know, hopefully it's cool for the voice actors to see, too, when like someone cosplays their character. I know that I would be thrilled if anyone cosplayed my original characters. So but yeah, I don't think that I like feel like I miss out on anything because especially normally um at AUSA, too, my friends have competed in the Masquerade, and that's, like, the, usually the biggest event at that convention, and I've gone to see it. Um, I, was, I walked on one year, and I sat in the audience this past year, and it, it's, it, was a, it was a good event, and I loved seeing all the skits and stuff, and, yeah, I don't really feel like I've, I've missed out on too, many, too much other programming. Yeah, with the cosplay, it seems like it's creeping in. And I don't mean that in a bad way, creeping in, but it's into so many different things. Because I've been to Maker Fairs in Florida, which has cosplay at it. Like, a lot of it's steampunk cosplay and stuff. And I've been at steampunk things. Uh, I went to the Murakami Gardens in Florida, and they have a, a, a anime festival which has cosplay in it. It seems like a lot of different things have cosplay elements now. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that it's kind of becoming more popularized as people do it more and more. Because really, like, I was used to just kind of explaining it to people and saying, oh, yeah, it's like Megacon. Oh, yeah, it's like Megacon. You know, because Megacon was, like, the only thing that people really knew when it came to cosplay. And so people, I guess, would associate cosplay to that end with just comic book stuff, uh, which it is so much more than that. And I think um, now that a lot of things are kind of like in, a lot of things are incorporating cosplay. Like I've been to the Murakami Gardens event. I went to Hatsume Fair um, in April. Yeah, it's in April every year. So I went last year and I'm going to go again this year. And I really enjoy that. And I enjoy that cosplay has kind of like, you know, seeped its way into some other places because um, to me, it makes it interesting uh, as a cosplayer. Right. So I get to, you know, to design or devise casual cosplays or like Yukata kimono things. If we're talking about Hatsume Fair, because it's like the Japanese gardens. And, you know, there are specific types of dress that I think 
uh, photo shoot well or look cool in those in those settings. Um, but I think it's cool too because then you get to see a lot of people get creative with things and a lot of cosplayers going to like Renaissance fairs and maker fairs and things. Yeah. You talked about casual cosplay. Uh, do you ever do that just out where you're dressed like a casual cosplay, the full costume, but you're just out somewhere? So I used to do that more than I do it now, um, just because I think in years past there were more like casual cosplay get together type events where people would be like, oh yeah, let's meet up at Disney Springs and we'll all be in cosplay and we'll walk around and hang out and have fun. These days I don't really like go out just to be in a casual costume. Now, oddly enough, because of all that DIY, I find myself in regular places, but dressed in full costume because I went to uh, a little like Easter photo shoot event and I, I didn't bring anything Easter related, but I wore Noctis from Final Fantasy 15 and we went back home and on the way back home, we were really hungry. So we stopped at Toasted to eat and I like found myself in this t- kind of tiny hole in the wall little place, just dressed up in full Noctis, which I thought was hilarious just because like, you know, in the game, it's funny because you stop in a bunch of different like places and eat food. But um, I just always find it like, some blend of funny and awkward to be in places in full costume just because like some of the stuff that I make is so elaborate. Like I couldn't even imagine going somewhere and existing in full costume in, in Krom, but I do end up in places like that in that way now because of DIY. Um, but I usually end up saving casual cosplay weirdly enough for like convention night times um, where I, if I want to still walk around then, uh, but I don't want to be like fully dressed. I just want to have like the makeup and the hair, especially for characters like Leo who are full armor. It's a lot easier to just take that all off and wear like a shirt and pants and still be satisfied. So I remember this reminds me of a story. One time we were in Orlando at the Titanic exhibit thing they have down there and I was, uh, coming out of it. And all of a sudden, we've seen a line of cosplayers walking down the street, and, like, probably, like, 20 of them were Attack on Titan, and it had mm-hmm. one link in the middle of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, I love this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. I love that about conventions, too, where you can just see, like, a gaggle of one series, and there's, like, a friend of theirs, I guess, that has tagged along that is something completely different, and just kind of, like... It makes it feel surreal and destroys that suspended suspended disbelief all at once. <laughs> but um, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's cool, too. Like you said, seeing people out being at like a convention and you're at McDonald's or somewhere and a bunch of people walk in. <laughs> yeah, and people always ask, too. Like there's always those people who are just tourists, especially if we're talking like in the Orlando area. So many people are just tourists who came here to see disney with their family and so like you'll get so many questions like oh what is this gathering of people i've seen a lot of people dressed like you today and that's like okay (laughs) here we go prepare my prepared cosplay spiel yes this is an anime convention down the street people get together and dress up and some don't but some do and we talk about you know this these different things that we're all into and it's like a it's like a you know convention a conference where people dress up however you want to explain it to people <laughs> uh i know some people i've talked to and some of my friends that do like big cosplay they talk about how they have plans for conventions like i know some do every day they'll do a costume change like a morning and evening and mm-hmm. some have like oh i got one per day or i'll also have one if i start feeling bad but i still want to go that's like like low-key cosplay almost Mm -hmm. do you have those type of things when you plan out for a convention yeah so normally i try to plan out my outfits depending on uh what my friends want to do versus what i want to make versus what we're all into right now i've kind of fallen into a very nice comfortable squad of like five people so not only do we all always get a hotel room together we all usually also cosplay together so it's become a very convenient very easy like just lifestyle of going along these last couple conventions 
depending on the convention, I will do a morning and an evening for all of the days except for Sunday. On Sunday, I usually only wear one just because that's the last day of a convention. And even if I am staying through until Monday, since, you know, like I said, we travel a lot. Uh, if, if we stay through till, till Monday, I'll still only wear one thing on Sunday just because to me, it's more comfortable and I don't have to worry about like going up and changing and then not being able to say goodbye to some of my friends who are like in that area who are leaving or who are going farther away. So it gives me more of a chance to like hang out with people. But I typically do like between five and six costumes per con and I'll do like a morning and an evening and a morning and an evening. Um, and I try to have a backup at some point somewhere just in case something goes wrong. But I do also try to wear everything at some point in time. Uh, these days, I'm usually doing like one Thursday and Sunday and then two Friday and Saturday. But yeah, like I said, it also depends on what my friends are doing, because if we want to wear something all day on one of the days, like I have a at AUSA coming up, I want to be Gaius from Fire Emblem with my friend Chloe, who is going to be Lissa. And she like loves Lissa and Gaius as a pair. Like it's her favorite thing in the whole world. And I agreed to be Gaius with her because she's been having trouble finding one. And I like that character a lot and I like his design well enough. So I'm going to do it with her. And if she wants to wear that all day on whatever day we choose to wear it, then I will gladly do that all day for her. Um, and then in return, she's going to do Takumi with my Leo and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I know like for a long time, like I would go with friends to conventions and stuff and I would be not, the, I'd be the one who's not cosplaying. Now, mm -hmm. later they found out ways of like having me be like one time a friend of mine said, you're going to cosplay as the creator of this series. <laughs> so I, cause I wasn't comfortable at the time. Now I try to do like more simple ones and stuff. Mm -hmm. and we do a group thing. Do you ever have the one friend? It's like, I'm not a cosplayer, but I'm going. Um, so all of my, all of my friends are cosplayers to some degree that I like room with and hotel and stay in a hotel with. Um, but some just cosplay more or less than others. So like, uh, my boyfriend and his, and his sister, they're really, really into it and they cosplay a lot more than, um, than even me. But then like other friends of ours that we room with that in that group of friends of ours, like don't cosplay as much. So like, instead of doing like five to six costumes per weekend, they'll do like between two and three. And like, I have a friend Carly who does like Inigo from Fire Emblem, but she'll do like Inigo. And then that's her only big thing for the weekend. And then she'll just wear a wig with some clothes. That's like an original design or like a, just awake with some clothes because she doesn't want to have her real hair out because it's part of, you know, being at a convention might as well dress up that type of feel. Uh, and then our other friend, Darian also sometimes will do, she'll do an outfit and then she'll wear like something, you know, akin to just regular, uh, or she'll just kind of like buy one and wear it with, with Tandy. Um, so it's like, you know, it depends, but I don't, I've never really, that had the friend who like doesn't cosplay at all, I guess, uh, to, to some capacity, all of my friends either make or like or enjoy cosplay. So that's cool though. You got a group yeah. together. Uh, you, I know a lot of people when they cosplay, they either keep their costumes for a long time and maybe cosplay them for even a couple of years or they sell them. Are you more <laughs> of a person that keeps everything or do you sell off stuff usually? So I just recently went through and did some spring cleaning and I put up a lot of stuff to be sold because um, <clears throat> I have been keeping a lot of my stuff for a while. And Crom was kind of the first costume that I made and made and wore that I, I wore for three years without even like I, I fixed him in between. But like he was my my biggest thing that I like made and touched up and tweaked. And I finally sold him. It was quite an emotional time for me. I was like, oh, my goodness, I've worn this for like three years. And I I got to sell him and he moved on to a new home. And I found myself looking at my closet like, oh, that's where that's where Krav's cape used to go in the closet. Oh, and I was like, now he's not even there anymore. Um but typically I try to wear stuff like 
at least three or four times before I think about giving it away just because I don't like to be the kind of like one and done cosplayer. Like I know people really like doing stuff like that because it allows them to do all of their, all the things they want to do like really quickly. And I totally understand that um, because I have a lot of things that I want to do as well. Like, will I be able to get to all of these things before I'm done cosplaying with that mysterious time in the future when I, when I decide that I'm done cosplaying, I don't know. Like, is that even really going to happen? Probably not, but <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to try and keep things for a little bit before letting them go to get a decent amount of wear and tear and to make sure I have enough pictures that I'm satisfied with, because if I don't have enough photos that I'm satisfied with, then I'll try to hang on to it to at least do like a DIY shoot sometime and then bring it back and then be like, okay, we got like 20 photos out of this. I'm, I'm good. I've got good memories in this outfit so I can, I can sell it now. And I actually um, just agreed to let go of my Skyward Sword Zelda, like just the other day and the person should be paying me soon. And that's also like a a very important costume to me. So it it was, it's been hard. It it gets harder and harder to get rid of costumes for me, but you know, we're, we're moving this year and I don't want to be squirreling everything away. Um, just because like, I also want to make room for more of these outfits that I want to do. Cause like, yes, I'm so happy with the closet that I've got and all the things that I've done already, but I also just really want to be a lot of characters. So it's that weird impasse that, uh, you know, I try to balance all the time. Well, we talked about earlier ways people fund their cosplay, like uh, selling prints and other mm-hmm. things. Uh, I know a lot of them does commissions. Do you do commission work too? So I have never opened up commission work. I have made costumes for friends via what I like to call the millennial bartering system, wherein they will purchase the fabric, buy me however much equivalent in food for my work, (laughs) or they will uh, exchange by doing another project for me. I'll be like, so if you make my skirt, I'll make this for you type thing. Um, So I've made costumes for other people in that way. I've never officially opened up commissions, and I'm not sure that I will, because I cosplay infrequently enough that that system of like balancing have I worn this enough okay it's time to sell it has kind of been feeding back into funding more of my costumes because now I feel my craftsmanship it has reached a point where I can justify selling a costume a little more for what it's worth used than I'm just trying to get this out of my closet used because I used to sell stuff and get like $40, $50 for it, maybe $60, $70 if if it was more pieces or if it was a more complete costume. But like, you know, Krom, I sold for $200 and Zelda, I'm selling for like over $100. And a lot of things I have now, I feel like I can hit like between $80 and $120 for a lot of my outfits just because my craftsmanship has improved. So I feel less bad about letting that stuff go on to other people. A lot of people, like I talk about it like this, but a lot of people, like if they're really looking for something, some people really don't care. Like they're like, no, no, I don't care that your craftsmanship isn't the best. Like, I don't care that you can see the raw edges on the inside. Cause you didn't line this garment or whatever it is. Like they just want to wear the outfit cause they want to be the character. Um, but you know, so I, I try to like, it's hard to to like sell old stuff to fund new costumes like it's a very it it requires really careful budgeting on my part of those new costumes but uh yeah i've never opened up commissions um i'm not necessarily confident enough to to make things for other people when they're not in the room with me yeah well to get sizing and everything right it, it probably would be hard Oh, yes, it is. It is very difficult. Like even with a dress form, you know, like dress forms have set like shoulder sizes. You can't like make a shoulder, make their shoulder width smaller or larger. And you can't like ever perfectly emulate the size of the person that you're making it for. So what looks good on a dress form doesn't always look good on a person. And it's a very careful balance because like a lot of the times with you know, all the different body types that people are and like all the, everything that anyone can be sometimes more often than not, actually stuff will look bad on a dress form and then look great on the person just because like a dress form shoulders are awkwardly large and it makes this jacket fit unevenly. But then on the person, it just fits them perfectly because it's their exact measurements. Um, Like my boyfriend does commission work, but I've, 
I've not opened up that that field yet, just because it makes me a little more nervous than I'm comfortable with. <laughs> A uh, couple more questions before I let you go for today, and thanks again for joining me to talk. Uh, one of the things I ask a lot of people about because uh, a lot of people look at cosplayers online and they they get intimidated by how well the stuff looks. They mm-hmm. get intimidated by everything looks perfect and everything like that. Can you tell uh, let people know about a cosplay that you may have started maybe and you just couldn't finish, or has that ever happened to you? Oh, oh yes. Of course. I think it happens to every cosplayer. Like, <laughs> I don't think there's a single cosplayer I know that doesn't have some abandoned project in their in their like in the bowels of their their fabric stashes. <laughs> so I had to recently toss a bunch of really old like web comic cosplays um, from from Homestuck. So that's like six years ago is when I was cosplaying that actively, and. Like, I, I had to toss the work in progresses because, like, if I had made them now, I'm such different measurements, they wouldn't fit me. But, like, I think what kept me from finishing them back when I started them was that they were just too difficult because it was like a tailcoat and a full suit were the things that I was trying to make at the time. And that's just really hard stuff. Uh, so, like, I didn't know how to do a lot of those things then. And I still don't know how to make a really good blazer now, though I have at least made a blazer. It's very difficult. Suits are so hard. And so, like, like I, I also fall into that intimidation category sometimes. Like, I'll look at people who do this really impeccable work, and it just boggles my mind. Like, oh, my gosh, how can you even do stuff that's that good? Um, that's unreal. You look so You look so perfect. And I just have to kind of remind myself that, like, you know, that's that's them and their work and all the, the most I can do is the best I can do. And I would say that's like my advice for anyone, you know, listening who wants to get over the fear of like someone who they think looks really good or even better than them. Like Leo was like this for me. There are a lot of Leo cosplayers on like, you know, the Internet, Facebook, Instagram, etc. And a lot of them are just so beautiful and the, like the, the armor was just so well made and I had never really made armor before. So it was very intimidating to start him. And I waited way too long to start him. Um, it still turned out, finished it. It looks, it looks pretty good. I have some things I want to adjust, but that's fine. Um, but it was just so like, so intimidating to me because I really wanted to make him like as perfect as I possibly could. And I think that it's important for novice cosplayers and intermediate cosplayers like myself to just kind of like let go of the idea that it needs to be perfect because, you know, it's especially if you are only trying to do this just for fun, it is just for fun. And if you can challenge yourself and learn something new, then you have totally made all that you need to make out of that. Like you've got, you've got everything you needed to get out of that experience, you know? Um, so I think that like what stops me usually from finishing stuff or pr- before what stopped me from finishing stuff was like just not knowing how to do the garment. But I try not to let that stuff stuff stop me anymore just because now I'm like getting into weird fantasy fandoms like Fire Emblem that have a lot of weird clothes that don't work. So you have to make a lot of your own patterns for them. Um, so it becomes like an interesting sort of like teach yourself, but base it off of what you already know type of thing. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, cosplay sometimes to some people is very intimidating, mm-hmm. but it's like any other art form, and I do think it's very much an art form. You get, you just got to work at it. Nothing gets yes. done. There's no such thing as a first draft published. <laughs> Ever. Yes, <laughs> I totally, I totally, totally agree. And I think that cosplay is an art form, too. And I wish more of the community saw it as an art form instead of how much modeling people see it as. Like, I don't know, I would argue that, like, you know, the relationship, that symbiotic relationship almost between cosplayers and cosplay photographers, like they're performing and like they're doing an art form, performing an art, and we are doing an art form and performing that art. So it's like you work together to make a whole new art as well. So I think that um, treating it like an art form is really important. And in that way, it's important to remember that with any art, practice is the only way to get better. And you will get to where you want to be one day. And if you're like me, maybe it will take you longer than if you're able to make costumes like once a week or twice a month. 
but you know i think that if you have the if you have the drive and the motivation to to put forth the effort and the work that you could do whatever you wanted to do to end things off let's give you uh let you tell people your strengths and weaknesses as a cosplayer because everybody has strengths and weaknesses when they do stuff Yes, yes. I so my strengths and weaknesses have shifted a lot since I started cosplaying. So before I used to be pretty decent at like wig styling and stuff, but now that stuff makes me really nervous. So I'm not as good at it as I used to be. That's something I have to work on. Um in that vein, makeup is also a weakness of mine. Um because I like just kind of do the same thing I've been doing for many years, really, where I just kind of like put on the concealer, slap on the foundation and powder, and then maybe I'll contour based on the same picture that I look up every time <laughs> to figure out where the male contouring goes. <laughs> And so, like, I, I want to be more adventurous in those things in the future. But as of right now, I I would consider them more of my weaknesses. Um, that and armor construction. I've always been bad at that, like, geometry where you have to break it apart into pieces. Um, like, you have to, you get you look at the final shape and then you have to draw out what it looks like unfolded, right? So I, I hated that part of geometry, and I hate that in in armor making in cosplay. Like I, it's so difficult for me to look at a shape as armor on a person and then break it apart into pieces to glue together heat shape and paint. Like I'm I'm fine if the shape is presented to me and all I have to do is is like heat gun it into a into the curves and then paint it. Like I can do everything from there forward, but the initial patterning is so difficult. On the other end of things, I am much, much better at, like, sewing. My strengths in sewing are interesting to talk about because I do crossplay and cosplay. I have an even split of skill sets regarding making male outfits and making female outfits. So, like, I've made a lot of skirts. I've made a couple dresses. I've made, like, three dresses now, actually, three different types. So I love making dresses. They're one of my favorite things to make, and I don't get to make them enough. Um, I'm pretty good at tunics now, and I'm my biggest, most favorite thing to do in, uh, in cosplay and sewing construction is satin stitching because I love the way it looks and I think I will always feel this way and I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. even of my friends who are like better craftsmen than me, sometimes they'll still get me to like satin stitch things for them because I just do a really clean job with it, even you know, like from machine to machine, um, because I, I love it, and I think that, like, most people consider it to be really tedious, so they try to find other ways around doing it where they can get those, like, sharp, clean lines of just whatever they need without the stitching. But I think that the stitching is uh, fun instead of tedious, which is hilarious because, you know, how many people view it that way. But, yeah, and I, in a similar vein, I'm also pretty good at sewing on bias tape. I don't do it the right way, but I, I don't mind the way that top stitching looks, so... I, I just kind of like sew it on and it's, it's usually pretty clean. I usually do a pretty good job with that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, kind of weird, even split of skill set between, between guy and girl stuff. I don't really mess with body suits. If I have to do a bodysuit costume at any t point in the future, I'll either like outsource that to a friend or like pick up a, a pre-made thing and alter it from there because whew, that's scary. <laughs> It doesn't really surprise me. Somebody's talking about doing editing work with like stitching. Yeah. <laughs> so I like all this tedious stuff that no one else really likes to do. Like no one likes to proofread their own work, but I, here I am. I will proofread and look over and edit anything for anyone. Just like come to me. I will give you a quote. Like honestly, I love that stuff. And so of course I also like the other thing that people consider to be really, really tedious. <laughs> So where can people find you online? Where would you like to point them to? So uh, most people find me on Instagram, which is just at TitleZora. Although I also tend to dump all of my photo shoots on Facebook all at once. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that where I exclusively share because only like 280 some odd people like my Facebook page, which is just TitleZora Cosplay. Um and so like no one really no one really goes there but that's where i dump all of my photos all the time so it's like if you really want to see all of the photos of a set cuz i'll forget to post a lot of them on instagram 
uh, just my Facebook is, is where you can find me. And conversationally speaking, I'm also on Twitter, uh, at TitleZora. I'm the same everywhere, really. <laughs> if you want to find me on a social media, just, like, look up TitleZora. And if a person comes up, that is probably me. <laughs> but, yeah, so Facebook and Instagram I use pretty actively, and I'm on Twitter now and again. Cool. I recommend people going and checking out your cosplay. It's a lot of really good stuff. Well, thank you so much. Cool. I really appreciate that. Cool. And, again, thanks for talking to me. And if you ever want to promote anything or anything, let me know, and we could talk again, or I'll just put an ad on something if you want me to promote it or something like that. Sure thing, sure thing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Shortlisted, the podcast where the hosts take a top 10 list off the internet, because there are a few, and talk about them for an hour. They set the clock when they remember and talk for an hour if the equipment cooperates. And then they shut up whether they've made it through the list or not. They're not racing against time. They're just shortlisting their big mouths.